Neuromorphic event-based cameras refer to a category of novel bio-inspired sensors, which mimic the transient pathway of the human vision system, and consequently acquire visual information in a completely different way from traditional cameras, producing a stream of asynchronous per pixel intensity changes instead of intensity frames at a fixed frame rate. This novel principle of operation brings many potential advantages over traditional frame-based cameras, such as high speed, high dynamic range, and low power consumption, etc. However, the unconventional output by event-based cameras is not compatible with the main body of perception algorithms designed for standard cameras. One of the challenges is to answer the question, how to leverage the advantages of event-based cameras to solve a given task by optimally processing the event stream. Driven by this question, we focus specifically on the problem of visual dometry using event-based cameras in this video. We first provide you a good picture of this field through a brief literature review and cast the core problem of event-based visual odometry. Second, we introduce our recent work event-based stereo visual odometry. We disclose more technical details and some new results in driving scenarios. Finally, as take-home messages, we summarize the talk and outline remaining open questions in event-based visual odometry. Like general visual odometry techniques, event-based methods also consist of two sub-problems, including the camera pose tracking sub-problem and the three-dimensional mapping subproblem. The interleaved coupling nature of these two subproblems make visuodometry a chicken and egg problem. Namely, you have to know one of them to solve the other. Tracking and mapping subproblems are solved in parallel and they exchange information recursively. Therefore, our literature review is made on each subproblem re respectively, and we highlight two system pipelines at the end. Let's start with event-based mapping subproblem. Event-based mapping refers to recovering depth information from event streams. Existing methods can be classified into two categories. The first one is called instantaneous stereo method, which typically applies a pair of event-based cameras that have been calibrated extrinsically and synchronized temporarily. By instantaneous, it means to recover depth information from observations occurred at a time instant. Typically, this kind of method consists of two steps. The first step is to find corresponding events occurred in the left and the right event camera, and the second one is to perform triangulation. It is worth mentioning that state-of-the-art method used a hybrid metric to measure the similarity of two events which considers temporal coherence, epipolar constraint, and motion consistency in the spatial-temporal neighborhood. The second category is called temporal stereo. The majority literatures around this category go to the monocular case. This kind of methods assume to have prior knowledge of the camera's motion, and the leverage events occurred over a temporal window to determine the 3D location of structures by finding the maximum in the disparity space image through either voting in the discrete space or in a way of continuous optimization. Now let's switch to the second subproblem, event-based camera pose tracking. Increasing complexity in terms of motion patterns and scenes geometry is witnessed in the research of this problem. Early works addressed the planet motion estimation problem by observing predefined two-dimensional geometric primitives. Things become more complicated when dealing with three-dimensional rotation in a natural scene. Hannah Kim et al. proposed a probabilistic filtering-based method which predicted the rotation of the event camera while recovering a gradient map that induced the event observations. Another representative work was proposed by Guillermo et al., which is a method based on the idea of motion compensation. It aligned events under the estimated three-dimensional rotation model. The most difficult case is to deal with the full six-degree of freedom motion estimation in a natural scene. Both of the two examples shown here assume that the 3D map of the environment was known in advance and do not need to update. 
to show that an event-based camera pose tracker can outperform counterparts using standard cameras when dealing with aggressive motions and challenging illumination conditions. Built on top of above-mentioned techniques, modern state-of-the-art event-based visualometry systems achieve parallel tracking and mapping in real time. Our literature review is restricted to pipelines that use only events as input. Representative pipelines consist of the following three works, and two of them used a monocular event camera. We briefly revisit the monocular examples and detail our recent work, the ES wheel system, in the next section. The ECCV 2016 work presented by Hami Kim et al. is the first system paper that realized event based tracking and mapping in real time. This work is based on the assumption of brightness constancy evaluated in a log intensity domain. Slightly different from classical design with two independent subproblem solvers, this work consists of three interleaved probabilistic filters solving the subproblem of tracking, mapping, and additionally log intensity recovery. The second representative work is ESWO published by Henry et al. in 2017, which is a geometric method. It doesn't require to recover intensity information from events, and therefore, it follows the classical design with two independent threads. The proposed mapping solution is based on the event-based temporal stereo method, which determines the 3D location of the structure by searching the maximum in the disparity space image. The camera post tracking is performed through a 3D to 2D registration process, which aligns the 3D edge map to the synthesized event map. Okay, that's pretty much about the literature review. And now you may be wondering what exactly the core problem is in the design of event-based visuodometry. From a Bayesian perspective, the nature of visuodometry is a recursive state estimation problem, which performs prediction and correction recursively. In practical, each subproblem is solved assuming the status of the other is known. Therefore, the interleaved tracking and mapping threads exchange information constantly. From a perspective of methodology, the core problem of state estimation is to establish data association and determine the measurement model. We used the ACCV 2016 paper as an example to explain this methodology. As mentioned before, this system consists of three subproblems, and each of them is an extended common filter. The state estimation problem here is to model the physical process of events generation. The data association is established on two temporally successive events occurred at the same pixel coordinate, and the measurement model evaluates the brightness change at its pixel given all the state variables. Each filter is then updated using the residue, which can be easily calculated as the difference between the prediction of the measurement model and the real observation, namely the brightness variation threshold C. Now we are clear about the core problem of event-based visualometry. So how do we make a difference? We cannot stop asking questions like, can we find novel axiometric information based on which the event-based data association can be established? And is the monocular configuration the best choice? How about the stereo configuration? Are driven by these questions, let's look at our recent work, event-based stereo visuodometry. In this section, we present our recent work, event-based stereo visuodometry. The proposed system takes as input the asynchronous data acquired by a pair of event cameras in stereo configuration and recovers the motion of the cameras as well as a semi-dense map of the scene. It exploits spatial temporal consistency of the events across the image planes of the cameras to solve both localization and mapping subproblems of visuodometry. The system runs in real time on the standard CPU. To establish effective stereo data association, we create distinctive representation of events by advocating the use of time surface maps, which was originally proposed for event-based pattern recognition. A detectable 3D point in the overlapping field of view of the event cameras will generate an event on both left and right cameras. 
Ideally, these two events should spike simultaneously, and the coordinates should be corresponding in terms of the epipolar geometry defined by both cameras. This property actually enables us to build the data association based on a stereotemporal consistency. Based on established spatial temporal consistency criterion, the inverse depth of an event observed from the virtual view at which it occurred is estimated by optimizing the objective function to improve the density of the reconstruction while reducing the uncertainty of the estimated depths. We run the mapping method on several pair of stereo observation a long time and fuse the results. To this end, a fusion strategy based on the probabilistic characteristics of inverse depth estimates is developed and incrementally applied as sparse reconstruction result arrives. The resulting inverse depth map would incrementally approach the semi dense level. The goal of the band based tracking is to estimate the pose of the left camera in the current stereo observation with respect to a reference depth map. To fully take advantage of time surface maps, we present a novel tracking method based on global image like registration using time surface negatives. Time surfaces preserve the motion history of the edges due to the exponential decay applied in the generation procedure. This can be interpreted as an anisotropic distance field. To formulate a registration problem as a minimum optimization problem rather than a maximum one, we propose the idea of time surfaces negative, which is defined as this. Therefore, an implicit data association between the known 3D semi-dense inverse depth map and dark areas in the negative time surface map are established and used for applying the 3D to 2D registration. The problem is formulated with forward composition of Lucas Canade method and solved with iteratively related least squares method. We see a unique local minimum residing near the ground truth in each degree of freedom. Therefore, the convergence to the optimum is guaranteed as long as the successive estimates are close to each other. We evaluate the proposed system using publicly available datasets. These datasets were collected with different model of Davis sensors. The baseline configuration ranges from 7.5 to 15 cm. The cameras were either handheld or mounted on a drone. We also build a stereo rig and collect our own data. The design of the stereo rig has been released together with the software. This demo shows one of our collected sequence at Hong Kong UST. The system is also tested under challenging illumination conditions, such as low light and high dynamic range. Recently, an stereo event dataset for driving scenario is published by David Scaramuzzi's group. Our ES wheel system is the first event-based visual diometry pipeline that shows success on this dataset. Now let's summarize the talk. In this tutorial, we first provide a brief literature review on event-based visual geometry and point out the core problem in the design. Second, we disclose technical details of our recent work, event-based stereo visual geometry. Anything about ES wheel project can be found in the following links. We have released the code on GitHub. Please feel free to try it and any questions are welcomed. Two take-home messages. The full potential of event cameras is still not fully exploited by existing event-based visual geometry solutions. We notice that state-of-the-art solutions typically make a trade-off between latency and computation complexity. 
to achieve higher accuracy and real-time performance, the batch manner is somehow preferred than ideal event-by-event -event manner. Besides, we have witnessed that many event-based solutions, not only event-based virodometry, but also other applications running on platform with high energy consumption, such as a GPU. This is somehow inconsistent with the original intention of neuromorphic engineering, which aims at compact and energy efficient solutions. Therefore, there's still a long way to go in this field. That's all about the tutorial. Thanks for watching.